Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're going to have a really fun time learning how we can take incoming MIDI coming into our Touch Designer project and actually feed it directly into a VST plugin, especially if you've got a lot of instruments. You can go ahead and start playing them easily within Touch Designer. Now I've got a little MIDI keyboard right under where the camera view is and even if I tried to bring it up, Nvidia's background subtraction would get rid of it. But Let's go ahead and delete everything here and we'll get started from scratch. So the first thing we're going to do is load in our VST plugin inside of Touch Designer. So I'm going to go ahead and open the OpCreate dialog, find the audio VST chop and create one of those. Now if you don't see the audio VST chop, just remember that this is only in the latest experimental build, which in this case is the 2021.3. 38110. If you're using the stable build or any older build than that, you probably won't even see this operator. And if you aren't sure what this operator is, check out our YouTube channel. We've got a bunch of videos about the excitement around audio VSTs inside of Touch Designer. Now I'm going to go ahead and load this audio VST here. And I downloaded a couple of really great plugins and one of my favorite free synth plugins from back in my days in the music business is the Yuhi Tyrell N6. This is a classic kind of old school. I mean, the, the name Tyrell, I think, gives it away. It's a very Blade Runner feeling analog synth, and it works fantastic, and it's free. So that's a great price tag. Now, one of the troubles that you're going to have getting started with VSTs, especially since they're such a new feature and there isn't a lot of documentation, is, is how to do some of these common workflow things, especially when we think to ourselves, the ability to load VST instruments into Touch Designer and be able to play them with our MIDI keyboard. Well, there's a couple of little things that we have to do before we can get into that. So now that I have my Tyrell N6 loaded up here inside of a little plugin window and I hit display plugin GUI to show it, I'm just gonna drag it off down to the bottom for now because we have to actually get our MIDI input first. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a MIDI in chop in this case, I've already gone ahead and activated my MIDI device, but if you haven't, you can go to the dialogs at the top. We're going to go to the MIDI device mapper, and by default, you're not going to see anything inside of this mapping area in the middle. So what we can do is create new mapping, and then go ahead and select your device from there. So in this case, I've got an Akai MPK249, so I'm going to select that as my in and out device, and I'm just going to remember that this is on channel 1. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and now if I start to play the different notes on the keyboard and I always like to just give one big swipe across the keyboard, activate all of my notes across all of that single channel that I have here and now you can see as I'm playing my different notes I'm getting those values coming in. Now one thing that we're going to notice here is that the values are between 0 and 1 and you can see that they're changing based on how much pressure I'm applying to the keys. So this is the velocity is actually contained within that 0 to 1 range. But what I like to do is rescale this immediately because most use cases of MIDI are always going to be between that range of 0 to 127. So I'll go ahead and create a math chop after this connect my MIDI into that and then I'm going to go to the range page and from here I know that my range is from 0 to 1 and I want it to be from 0 to 127. So now I have something that looks more like traditional MIDI where the harder I click it we can see those values are at 127 and the softer I hit these keys you know they're in that 30 to 40 to 70 etc range. So I can go ahead and put a null chop after this because that's all of the processing I need to do on my MIDI. Now when it comes to actually sending this MIDI information into the audio VST chop, currently there is no easy way to just grab the wire and connect it. I'm sure something like this might get released in the future, but for now we have to use a little bit of Python. But luckily we just need about two lines of Python. So even if you're not very confident in your Python, don't worry, you can just copy exactly what you see on screen and just save it inside of your toolkit. So what I'm going to do here is create a chop execute dat. And the strategy that we're using here is that every time a note value goes on, we are going to send a Python command to the audio VST chop. We're going to tell it which channel the note was on, what the note number was, and what the velocity of that note is. Now on the flip side, every time one of these channels goes back to zero, we have to then send a note off 
for that same channel, same note, and technically a velocity of zero. So all we have to do here really is use our off to on and our on to off callbacks to just quickly grab every time any note goes on, look inside of its channel name, get the information we need, send the note on, and similarly for the note off. So I'll go ahead and grab my null one here and drag and drop it onto the chops parameter of my chop execute. I'm gonna make sure the off to on is turned on and the on to off is turned on. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the value change because I don't really need that in this case. Now I'm gonna right click on this and edit the contents. And let me bring over my code editor here. So we're gonna add our code in the first function and in this third function. Now luckily this is pretty easy to do. So the audio VST chop itself has a special set of send note on and send note off uh, functions we can call. So we'll start by doing our op search, finding audio VST one. And I can even go ahead and copy that already into my on to off area. And the function we're gonna use for turning the note on is called send note on. Now it's important to make sure you capitalize the N and the O in this case, because if you don't, you're gonna get an error. And then we're gonna to have to send three arguments into this. The first is going to be the channel that we're using for our MIDI. Now in most cases, you don't even need to pull this dynamically from the name. You're probably just gonna be sending to channel one. Now where it gets a little bit trickier is figuring out the note number and then the value is actually pretty simple again. So let's start with our note number here because what we essentially have to do is actually grab that from the name of the channel itself. Now luckily inside of these callbacks we have a bunch of information that gets directly fed to us from whomever is calling it. In this case the channel is a channel object that tells us everything we need to know about the channel that's triggering this function. So what we could do is go ahead and type channel dot name, which is gonna give us the full name of the channel. And now we can do a little bit of tricky string parsing to actually just grab the last two characters here. So what I could do is open up a set of square brackets because in Python, every string can actually be treated like a list of characters. And there's a couple of fun things we can do with that. So for example, what we could do is say, give me starting from the last two characters till the end of the string. And to do that, don't worry if you haven't done this before, you'll, you'll get used to string formatting in Python and manipulating strings, but we're gonna start with a negative two. And when we give that negative two, we're essentially telling it start from the end and go two characters inward. And that's where we're gonna start getting our string. And then we're going to put a colon to tell it that we're going to start from negative two and go all the way until, but the nice thing here is that we don't actually have to put any value for the until, because if we leave this blank, it's going to assume that we're going to start from two characters from the end and go all the way to whatever the last character is. So even just doing this quick channel dot name, opening a set of square brackets and putting negative two colon will essentially always give us the last two digits here on the end of these channel names that we can see coming in. So that's great, that's gonna give us the note numbers. And then the last thing we have to do is just give it the velocity. Now in this case, the velocity as we saw is represented by the actual value of the channel. So what we could do here is actually just use this incoming val attribute that's gonna give us the numeric value of the change sample. The one thing I would recommend is actually wrapping this inside of an int. So we're gonna say int, and then we're gonna open a set of brackets because all of the MIDI protocol doesn't really work with floats. Everything has to be an integer. So in this case, it's just an extra safety to make sure if anything ever happens in our chop processing chain, and for some reason 73.5 comes in as the velocity, we don't wanna send 73.5 to our synth. We're just gonna send 73. So this int is gonna ensure that any value that comes through gets turned into an integer. And inside of those brackets, we can just say val. So essentially we are getting the operator audio VST one. We are using the function to send note on. We're telling it the MIDI channel is one. The note number is going to be what we pick off of the last two characters of our string here. 
and then we're sending it the value of that channel as our velocity. Now, the really great thing about this is we can copy and paste this whole thing, and all we have to do to send our note off is change the on to off inside of that function name. So whenever our channel goes from a value of zero to anything that's not zero, we're gonna send a note on the channel name and the velocity, and then whenever any of those channels turn off and hit zero again, we're gonna send a note off, value of zero on the velocity, as well as that channel name and number. So I can go ahead and save this, and inside my Tyrell N6 here, I can already see that clicking some keys is giving me some waveforms here, which is a great sign. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and just temporarily plug this into an audio device out just so that we could hear it. And everything's working. So that's really all that you need to get started with a really simple version of getting MIDI coming into Touch Designer and then feeding that into a VST synth. Now, one other quick trick that you should know about is how to actually control some of these parameters in case you want to automate any of the parameters. And there's two really great buttons that come with the Audio VST Chop. The first is Learn Parameters, and the second is Regular Parameters. Now, if we start with the second, what this does is if I turn this on and I go to the plugin page of parameters, Touch Designer is automatically going to go through every single available knob, value, uh, switch, menu, all of these things, and it's automatically going to recreate all of them as custom parameters inside of Touch Designer. Now this could be good if you're very familiar with a synth or a plugin and you know what every single attribute or parameter is going to do. In most cases though, you'll probably want to actually turn that regular parameters off and use the learn parameters function. And this is a really great way to approach working with these synths and bringing their channels into Touch Designer because what I can do is click learn parameters. While this is on, I can switch over to my plugin page of parameters and any of the parameters inside of my VST synth that I start to manipulate, we can see are automatically going to be recorded as new custom parameters. Now, in some VSTs, this works a little bit better than others, depending on how those VSTs work, because in this case, you can see as I'm trying to change certain parameters, other ones are triggering as well. So this can be a little bit of a hit or miss process still. Remember, this is the experimental build and very, very new features inside of Touch Designer. And for some things, it definitely works better than others. Now, that may promote this usage of the regular parameters because if you're unable to actually get a lot of those parameters coming in and out and getting mapped, then you can always go to this mode and you can see I have all of these parameters and changing any of them changes their corresponding parameter inside of your plugin. So with those couple of tricks, you should be able to now get any kind of live MIDI coming in, or if you want to simulate MIDI inside a Touch Designer, just make sure you use a very similar channel name. We're using a tiny bit of Python here to send those MIDI values into the VST, and using either the regular parameters or the learn parameters, we're able to get a lot of those values, knobs, buttons, sliders, and everything out of the VST and into something we can control in Touch Designer. The final thing that's very, very helpful is the panic button. Now, if you're not familiar with synths, uh, a lot of them have something called a panic button, which really is not anything to panic about, but the function is that if for some reason, whether it's a MIDI signal or any other kind of control signal gets stuck in a position, the panic button or function is supposed to just clear all signals out of it and reset that synth state back to zero. So for example, if I wanted to do that inside a touch designer, it's actually very easy. I can make a separate text dat here, and you can connect this to a button if it's easier for you or, or however you want to control it. And I'm going to open up my code editor, and all I have to do is first start my op search for audio VST1, and then I do dot panic. And I put a little set of brackets on the end of it. And this very simple function, if for example I was to hold down a few of these uh, notes here, and even lock my MIDI. So now, hands off the keyboard. Look, ma, no hands. You know, we're imagining a situation where our MIDI signal gets a little bit crazy and, and some notes get stuck down. We can always go back, run our panic, and that is going to mute all of those channels, 
turn off any notes that are on, all that stuff goes back to normal. So those are just some nice ways that you can control and use VSTs inside a touch designer. Hopefully this helps get a lot of people up and running. I'm super excited to be uh, plugging in my MIDI keyboard and playing with some fun synths inside a touch designer and I hope you are too. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.